Welcome to Journalism 216, Writing for Mass Media at Durham Technical Community College. I'm Ms. Gilbert, and I'll be your instructor for this course. We'll start this orientation with a few fun facts about me. We'll also learn a little bit more about me in the introduction forum, which is your first week's assignment. Then we'll go over some key points in the syllabus and move on to navigating Sakai and Edpuzzle, which are the primary tools that we'll use for this course. You're getting to know me as an adjunct instructor in the English and Communication Department here at Durham Tech. My full-time job is the Associate Director of Student Media at NC State, an advisor to student radio station WKNC 88.1 FM HD1 and HD2. That means I do work with student journalists, primarily the bloggers, podcasters, and radio news reporters. I studied journalism and telecommunications and film at Eastern Michigan University, where I was a news reporter for the Eastern Echo newspaper, along with doing some work at WEMU and WQBR, the public radio and student radio station at Eastern. I then moved on to Central Michigan University, where I worked as a radio producer and jazz music director at CMU Public Radio. I occasionally did audio profiles of jazz musicians. While at Central, I earned a master's in broadcast and cinematic arts. Also during my time at CMU, I worked for two years as an adjunct instructor at Saginaw Valley State University, teaching intro to mass media as well as public speaking. Since moving from Michigan to the Triangle, I also spent several years editing a semi-annual newsletter for College Broadcasters Incorporated, a national nonprofit that supports student electronic media. On a personal note, I'm the third of four children. We're all first-generation college students, and now three of us have master's degrees, and both me and that tall guy over on the end have taught college. I also have twin girls, that's Michelle on the left and Eleanor on the right. There are three things required for this course. First, you'll need our textbook, the third edition of Tim Harrower's Inside Reporting, a practical guide to the craft of journalism. It's laid out a lot like a magazine. It's very informative and easy to read. Another resource we'll be using is the Associated Press style book, the AP style book, which should not be confused with the APA style book you might have used in other courses. AP stands for the Associated Press and is essentially the journalist's Bible. It will tell you everything you need to know about journalistic style. Ideally, you'll have the most recent version, but the campus bookstore may list an older version as your required text. A printed copy of the style book is preferred to an interactive ebook, a mobile app, or an online subscription, as it's typically easier to just page through the book when you're new to journalism and don't always know exactly what to look for. I also found a PDF of the 2006 version of the style book online and have it posted on the Sakai site. It's obviously quite old by now and things do change, but it's free. If you think you might be interested in pursuing journalism past this course, I'd recommend purchasing a new or not too new old style book. Otherwise, the PDF will get you through the course if you don't have the funds to purchase a new style book. Finally, I very strongly recommend you purchase, excuse me, you download the free Microsoft Office plugin Grammarly. I guarantee this will help you catch additional errors in your papers and increase your grade. Again, it's free to download. It's free from Grammarly.com. Grammarly. Now we'll move on to course policies. All course assignments must be submitted via Sakai as Microsoft Word.doc or .docx documents. All assignments should be in Arial or Times New Roman font and must be double spaced to allow room for me to make comments and editing marks. If you submit an assignment in any other format, especially Apple Pages, I may not be able to open it and you'll lose points for the assignment. Don't share a Google Doc with me as I often can't open it. Next is course attendance. I know this is an online class, but attendance still counts. In order to be counted as present for a given week, 
you must submit that week's assignments, whether it's a quiz, Sakai homework, or a writing assignment. If for some reason you cannot submit the assignment, you can email me before 11.55 p.m. Thursday and let me know, and I can still mark you as present for the week, but only if you have a participation grade for that week. And speaking of participation, this grade has a, this class has a participation component. I use a program called Edpuzzle to insert questions into the week's video lectures, view the videos and answer the questions to earn participation points for the week. The goal isn't to get all the Edpuzzle questions right, but to reinforce key ideas in that week's lecture. As long as you try to answer the questions correctly, you'll receive full, full participation points. And as this is a journalism class and journalists work on deadlines, all assignments are due on the due date by 11.55 p.m. Eastern time. Any assignments not submitted to Sakai by the deadline will be considered late. Late writing assignments, quizzes, and Sakai assignments will be assessed a 10% penalty. All assignments will remain open for one week following the due date, with the exception of the final assignment, which will only be open for an additional 24 hours. This class will be graded as follows. First, you'll have four AP style quizzes throughout the semester, each worth 30 points for a total of 120 points. You will have four Sakai homework assignments, also each worth 30 points for a total of 120 points. There will be 13 recorded lectures with questions you need to answer. Each week's participation grade is 10 points for 130 points total. Each writing assignment will have a story forum associated with it, worth 25 points for 10, for, excuse me, for 100 total points. Next are three of your four writing assignments. Each are worth 100 points, a campus news story, a radio news story, and a press release. Your final writing assignment, the fourth of four, is an investigative story that you'll work on throughout the semester. You'll have to submit your story plan for 30 points, then a rough draft worth 50 points, which will be critiqued by a fellow student. Meanwhile, you'll be critiquing stories by your fellow students for another 50 points. The final version of your investigative story will be worth 100 points. That makes 1,000 total points possible for the class. All assignments for this class, including the final writing assignment, are due on Thursdays at 11.55 p.m. If you see any other due date in Sakai, it's an error on my part, and it should be Thursday at 11.55 p.m. The new week's lectures will be available on Friday at 7 a.m., and there are no assignments due during the fall, week of fall break or Thanksgiving. Durham Tech has a number of established policies to help support student learning and communicate the high expectations we have for our students. I'll highlight a few of them here. First is the academic honesty policy that prohibits plagiarism. Plagiarism is defined as representing another's work as your own. This includes copying material and using ideas from an article, book, unpublished paper, or the internet without proper documentation. Lucky for you, journalism is all about citing the sources of your material. Also, I have reported a student for plagiarism before and I have no problem doing it again. Students must submit an online activity in Sakai between the class start date and the census date in order to officially enter the class. Anyone who does not do so will be dropped from the class as a no-show and will not be eligible for a refund. The specific census date for the class is listed in the syllabus and is typically within the first two weeks of the semester for a full semester class or in the first week for many sessions. Next is the attendance policy. I'll talk a little bit about how I take attendance in the course in a bit, but I do want to point out the final date for you to withdraw is listed in the class syllabus. Finally, if you have a disability that might have some impact on your work in this class and for which you may require accommodations, please contact Disability Services Office by calling 
7207. Emailing disability services at durhamtech.edu or visiting room 10209 in the Wynn Building for additional information regarding requirements for arranging accommodations. I'm happy to arrange for extra time on quizzes, relax deadlines, or any other accommodation as requested by Disability Services. Next, I wanna highlight some college resources. The first is the Center for Academic Excellence, or CAE, located in the Wynn Student Services Center, AKA Building 10. The CAE offers professional and peer tutors that can help you. Tutors are also available via Upswing 24 seven. I would encourage you to utilize the CAE if you think you need any extra help. Next are the many computer labs on campus. In case your laptop suddenly breaks, and I know this can happen, you'll want to familiarize yourself with their hours and locations to help you complete your assignments by their due dates. The syllabus also has a list of other resources you may need at some point during your time at Durham Tech, including the Campus Harvest Food Pantry, the Emergency Financial Assistant Program, Counseling and Crisis Services, and support for student parents. Finally, I want to point out that I have completed Safe Zone Ally training at Durham Tech. The Safe Zone Ally Program is a nationwide grassroots movement on college and university campuses to create and maintain networks of allies for lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, and queer communities. The program provides training to faculty and staff like me who would like to be allies, creating safe zones where students can discuss questions or concerns in a confidential and accepting space.